Okay, um, so we're going to talk about unit testing today. Um, give a demo of unit testing. So I'm going to start off by creating a new project. Um, I'm going to make it Java. I don't need to worry about any of these other things, like Java 11. Um, I don't need to use any libraries. Uh, I'm not going to create it from a template. I want just an empty project. And uh, we're going to call it chess. Oh, no, let's do, let's do uh, tic-tac-toe. We're not going to make a complete tic-tac-toe game, but we'll make some functionality of it. And who knows, maybe we'll make a whole one. So, first thing I'm going to do is go into the project structure. And I'm going to look at the modules. And I'm going to go into source, and I'm going to make a new folder called main. You've seen me do this before is repeating and another one called test you can call them whatever you want this just tends to be the typical structure that gets created I don't want source to be a sources anymore I do want main to be sources and I want tests test to be tests uh, so this tells the uh, IDE that my source code is here this is what I'm going to compile and be the binary output that I want to ship to a customer and test is where the unit tests live, so we're going to compile them to a separate place, and we're going to run them, and I don't have to ship them. Um, so that's really important. Um, and like I said before, library-wise, we're going to use Hamcrest. So we're going to go from Maven and org.hamcrest and search. And it can take a little while for it to complete. Um, the current version is 2.2, so that's what we will grab when it shows up. There we go, and 2.2. And we're good. Yep. And okay. So in our source now, um, for simplicity's sake, we'll make a package. Packages uh, reverse domain name, so bcit.ca, we do ca.bcit. Uh, the course is unique, so comp2526. Um, I could get more unique if I really wanted to, I don't want to, um, but I could say which term it's part of and all that. Um, and then tic tac toe is the uh, um, name of most specific piece of the name. Um, so it's the actual project we're creating. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make a new Java class called main. So normally I make a main class, that's where my main method goes. Um, and I'm sure I've said some of this before, but I'm going to do it again. Uh, first off, I make all my variables final. We're going to cover that today. Um, and for args, I call it argv because that's what I learned as a C programmer, and that's I did that for a long time before Java. Um, so that's the way I do things. Um, so this is my general, okay, I've now started a project. Right? That's the steps I always go through. Um, so in order to do tic-tac-toe, um, there's a few things we need. Um, so I can think of a board. We're going to need that. And a board consists of squares. Now, um, notice that I'm saying squares, but I'm creating a class called square. Um, it's very rare to actually name a class with a plural. So a board consists of squares, um, but a square is an individual thing. Uh, we also have pieces, right? the X and the O. And I said chest before, um, this is so far looking exactly the same, right? We'd have a board, it would have squares, there would be pieces. Um, the board would be a different size. Um, the pieces would be totally different, but the, the general concept is the same. Uh, we also have a player. So we have a board, it's got squares, square pieces go on squares, and players uh, deal with that. So I guess the thing we're missing really is the game. Okay. Um, and I'm actually going to make that an interface. Um, piece 
A um, couple of ways we can go about doing this. Um, if you think about chess, uh, a piece is um, an abstract thing and there's different kinds of pieces. That's one way to do it. So you've got a pawn, a rook, or whatever, right? So in chess, we could have a, a just a, or a checker, and sorry, um, tic-tac-toe, we could just have an X piece and an O piece. We just need a, a class called piece, and it takes a string saying if it's an X or an O kind of thing. We might want to make an X piece and an O piece. Um, if we think a little further and we go with, okay, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a teacher, I'm also an employee. Um, I could also be taking a course, which makes me a student. So I've got three different things, right? I'm, I'm an employee who's faculty and actually I got more than that. I'm an option head for two different options and I'm a program head um, and I'm faculty and I'm an instructor for this course and I'm an instructor for another course. And if I'm taking a course, I'm a student. So I can't extend from all of those things. I can make them interfaces, I can implement them, but that's not practical either. Um, so we might do something else, which is, um, and I'm not going to do it here, but in that case, I might do something that's a role. So if you think of a, a piece as having a role, so in chess, a pawn has a role, but if the pawn gets all the way to the other end, um, it can change its role to be a queen, right? So um, for simplicity's sake, right now we're just going to have a piece, but there's a whole bunch of things you could think of for that. Um, but I'm going to choose not to right now. No, don't know if we'll exchange that later, but that's fine. Um, <coughs> um, so square is going to contain a piece. Um, board is going to have a whole bunch of squares. Um, a piece is going to be owned by a player. A player is going to have a whole bunch of pieces. Um, and we got the game, which um, could be checkers, chess, whatever. Um, so I'm going to do the abstraction there just so we can see uh, some things. Um, to do with inheritance. Um, so it's a board game. So it's a hard decision to say if something should be an interface or an abstract class. Um, my rule of thumb is once you start um, needing variables and things like that, which I'm pretty sure board game is going to need, uh, I'm going to deal with abstract classes. Um, which might make game actually need to be an abstract class too, now that I think about it. Because uh, all games have players, so I might want to keep my player um, array or whatever I'm going to use up here. And then we also have a tic-tac-toe game, which extends board game. So think about a tic-tac-toe game. It's very specific, um, but it's a kind of board game. Um, So tic-tac-toe is a kind of board game. A board game has some things in common. Chess and checkers both have a board. That board is basically the same thing. Monopoly is a board game too. It's got the similar kind of thing. The board's a little different, but the same idea. Uh, checkers, same thing. Um, we could have card games, right? Where it's like poker or blackjack or things like that. Um, and uh, game, well, you know, game has some things in common. All games have players. Um, hide and seek has players. It's got nothing else to similar to tic-tac-toe. Um, the game is completed completely differently, but they both have players, right? So I can think of some things off the top of my head, which is why I made these. So now I've got my classes and I could start, um, and there's a few ways I could start, but I could start by making some tests. So let's go ahead and um, just deal with peace. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to say that I want to make a new, uh, choose it that way. Uh, different IDs are different. <laughs> uh, generate, there we go. And I want to generate a test. And I want that to be a JUnit 5 test. And it didn't find it, so I'm going to say fix. And it's going to say, okay, I want to use that. Awesome. 
So now it's downloaded like we did before with the, we didn't download it, it's just got it, but it's, it's added it to the project. Uh, the default name is peace test. Awesome. Uh, super class. We don't need to worry, worry, worry about that for now. The package, I want to keep it the same. Um, I can use setup before and after, uh, and or set up tear down before and after stuff. I'm not going to bother with that right now. Um, I'm just going to hit OK, and it will have made the same package, and we've got our piece test. Awesome. Okay, tests. Um, so if you look at older versions of JUnit, it used to be that you'd have to have something like this. It has to be public, it has to be void, and it has to start with the word test. Um, but sometimes calling the method test foo is bad, um, so I'm going to um, call, uh, let's see, every, every uh, piece has a, uh, a, a, um, an X or an O. I'm trying to think what a good name for X or O is. Um, as a symbol. So I could just call that get symbol or I could call that test get symbol. Um, but if I just want to call it get symbol, that's great. But the way JUnit used to look, work is that it would look up all, all the methods that started with the word test and run them. Uh, they changed that a long time ago, um, where we now we just say at test. Won't find that, we'll have to import it. Um, so there's import. Um, so there we go. And now we get into this idea of test-driven development. So um, what I'm going to want to do is make a couple of pieces, say three pieces. So I have not planned this at all. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. I've done, I've made check, or, uh, tic -tac -toe before, but you know, I'm still not, not thinking too hard. So I didn't plan this out and I'm going to work out my thought process with you here. Um, so when I create a piece, I want to pass in an X or an O. Right? That's one way I could go by doing it. Um, the other way I could go about doing it is that I could pass in the owner of the piece, the player, and the player could know if it was the X player or the O player. Um, and if I think about this with the role stuff I said before and all that, um, I'd probably pass it in as a role and the person who owned it. So I'll probably do that. So this, actually, I'll deal with errors later. So we don't have the players, so I'll need to make final player, player one, and player two. Um, so player one is our X player, and player two is our O player, we'll say. Um, which now actually makes this redundant. We don't need it anymore. And I've been talking about chess and checkers and all that kind of stuff too, right? So if I think about that then, the, uh, the piece class really should be an abstract class. And that's going to cause another problem because now we can't create an instance of it because it's abstract. All right. Um, and don't worry about things not compiling yet. Like I said, I'm just working this stuff out. Um, so this is taking the extreme position of test-driven development. I'm not going to think about anything. I'm just going to dis let the system discover, it its discover itself. Um, I'm not saying this is a good way to do things, um, but it is a way. Um, uh, but normally you sketch some things out at least to begin with. So if piece is abstract, 
Um, we're going to need a new class. Tick tack toe piece. And it's going to extend piece. So now we're going to make a new tick tack toe piece for these instead. That's cool. So now we create our player. It's got X or it's got O, and then we create the piece that belongs to the player. Okay, and because we, the player has an X and the player has an O, the, the piece knows if it's an X or no. Um, so the way I look at it is, okay, if I'm using, I need player to exist before I can do this, I'm going to have to go make the um, test for the player. Now, player takes a string. Oh, so we could have a chess player and a you know, whatever player, so we should actually make a new tick tack toe player, which extends player. And that means we should probably make player an abstract class, which means then in our test here, this has to become a tick tack toe player. So, same idea, uh, we need to connect to our player to be tested first. Um, one thing I'm going to do is, for simplicity's sake, I'm actually going to make a different package. Um, it's not going to be tic tac toe, it's going to be game. And I'm going to take the game, the board game, the player, and the piece. And I'm going to move those all to game. Uh, board and square too, because board and square have nothing to do with the tic-tac-toe thing, right? So I'm just, you know, structuring it to say, okay, this is what you need to do to play a tic-tac-toe game. This is what you need to do to play any game. And you might have noticed I got board game in there and square in there, so I'm going to make another one. New Java, no, package, there we go. Um, so those two go there for sure. Um, piece also goes into a board game. If you think about um, poker, there's no pieces. If you think about uh, um, hide and seek, there's no pieces, right? So all, board game moves there too. So there's the game. And all games have players. Board games all have a board game. Um, they all have a board, they all have a square, and they all have pieces. Right? Um, I'm going to ignore the fact that right now some games that aren't board games might have pieces, but you know, we can worry about that another, another time if we ever get there. Um, but structure, so structuring your stuff is important. So I want to focus on the tic-tac-toe stuff right now. Um, so I can't really test the piece before I've got the player tested. So I'm going to make a new test for the tic-tac-toe player. And this isn't going to be a piece test anymore. This is going to be a tic-tac-toe piece. Okay. Um, so what I'm saying here, um, I don't know if that's the right name to call the method, but what I'm saying here is that we've got couple of players X and O and I'm going to assert that player one dot get name
trying to remember what the uh, the right things are. But I'm not going to worry about that just yet. So it's I think it's equal to equal to x. And I'm not worried that things aren't compiling right now. Um, and get try to does that. We'll see what happens when we actually get the test. So what I've said is that um, tic-tac-toe player needs a constructor that takes a name, right? The X or the O, and it needs to have a get name method. So for now, I'm just going to throw those into the tic-tac-toe player. I'm going to show you a mistake that students make all the time. Okay, that code compiles. It's wrong. Don't scream at your computer if you see what's wrong. We'll come back to it. Um, but I'm going to show you the power of a test. Um, and we need a get name method. Should be a tic tac toe player. So there we go. We've got our test now. Um, just so things will be happy, I'm going to um, comment this out so we can run everything right now. So what we're saying is we created our player. Um, first one's X, second one's O. When we ask the players their name, they should be return X and O respectively. So let's run this. I don't think the equals is the correct method to be using. quickly look at something. <laughs> Sorry. Just searching on my phone really quick. It should be equal to. Sorry. Is equal to insert that and equal to. Okay. Um, make sure you're the right things. Don't know why I wasn't picking up the. Uh, 
Uh, import. Okay. So it fails. We expected to X, but we got null. Um, so what's happening is we double click on the get name. Here, we got null from player one dot get name, but we expected it to equal X. Let me just clean up this. So if we go to the tic-tac-toe player, I said I made a mistake. Um, the problem is that I meant to say name is assigned NM. Students make this problem mistake all the time. I don't know why. First step, make this final. Doesn't compile anymore because now we're no longer allowed to change name, right? Something that's final can receive a value once. Well, the place it received the value was here, right? We passed it into the constructor, so it got its value. So when the constructor got called, this has a value. It's either X or O in our case. And the final says you can't change it within this body here. So that tells us we have to change that around. Um, let's say didn't fix that. Do I want the, I have to think about this too. Do I want the player to be able to change their name midstream? I don't, because then maybe somebody can, you know, take two turns in a row, for example. So I want to make that final. So if I make this final, it's going to complain and say, you didn't assign it a value, right? And here it's going to say, you're using a value that hasn't been initialized yet. Remember, when you allocate the memory, when you say new, it allocates everything as zero, null, or false, right? It just zeroes out the whole memory. Uh, so this, by default, has no value yet uh, that the compiler knows about because you said it's going to be final, which means you can't use it until you've given it a value. So the system's guaranteed it's got a value of null, but the compiler's saying you didn't tell me what you wanted the value to be. Um, so both these things work out really well if you put them together. So now it should be, yeah, it's not catching up, but it should be saying that name can't be assigned and name has, NM can't be assigned and name hasn't been assigned. So the great fix is to say name is assigned NM. And now let's run the test again. Yay, we did it. Um, so that's probably good enough for now. I don't think uh, the player needs much more than that. So if we go back to our um, tic-tac-toe piece test, let me make this a tic-tac-toe piece. And I generally structure my variables in the order of initialization. So I'm gonna initialize the player one and player two before the pieces, so I'm going to declare them before there. Uh, your choice as to how you do things. Um, and that's good. That's good. But we don't have a tic-tac-toe piece constructor that takes a player. So now we have to go there. Now, what I can say is private final tic-tac-toe piece, no, player, sorry, player, player. Change it to P so we don't shadow the name. Shadow means that I have a player here and a player here. If I do that, then I have to say this dot player is assigned player. And I hate having to write this dot. I just want to write this dot. I just want to write player. But that won't work because then we're referring to this one, which means this variable here has shadowed this variable here. So we'll call this one P. Now it's happy. So Every piece in every game has a player, um, and can pieces. So, so, during that for the second, for the second, we have to move this up here um, into um, piece. And I didn't know anything about the 
tic-tac-toe player, it just knows a better player. Um, generally speaking, I make all my constructors for abstract classes protected. Um, there's no reason for it to be public because only a subclass can call it and protected, that's the purpose of it, that subclasses can call it. player so we just have to import it and we don't even know anything with tic toe player and now this doesn't work because we're not calling super passing in p so that part worked out great right so now we've got our um, in our test we've got our p takes a player right so we've tested the player. It can have an X or an O. Um, we can also have anything else at the moment. Um, we've got our tic-tac-toe piece, um, and it takes a player. Um, so now what we actually want to do is wanted to get that symbol, right? So uh, now we want to assert. Uh, we're going to steal those imports from over here. So when we say piece a dot get symbol, I want to check that it is equal to x for piece a, right? May, may as well be consistent. Look how this one, two, and three. piece two should be it belongs to player two so that should be O and please three that belongs to player one so it should be X not zero oh um, so the problem is that symbol doesn't have a get their piece doesn't have a get symbol um, so up on our piece we can add that Now, here comes the problem. Ah, we have that return a string. Here comes the problem. In Monopoly, for example, that symbol for the piece, well, wouldn't that really be like the thimble or the uh, uh, the dog in checker or in chess? It would be like a pawn or a queen or whatever. That has actually nothing to do with the player. But in tic-tac-toe, it has to do with the player. So this is ab actually an abstract method because it's going to depend on the kind of piece that we have. And that means that the tic-tac-toe piece needs to add get symbol. And it's going to return the player dot get name. Two things I don't like yet. Or two, one thing that doesn't work, one thing I don't like. I don't like returning the result of a method uh, call. So I'm going to make a final string name. Name is assigned. Player to get name. Return name. Now the problem is that we don't actually know what player is because it's not in piece. So we're not in tic-tac-toe piece. So we look up in piece. And it is there, but it's private. So this is a case where we could make it protected. By default, I make everything private until it doesn't need to be private anymore. So that's a way to deal with it. Uh, the other problem is that players don't all have get names. We put the name inside of the tic-tac-toe player. It really should probably go up in the player class. And because it's final, we want to um, set it in the 
constructor. Uh, so if it's there, so that means our tic-tac-toe player is going to change here to just be a call to super pass in the name. So the way I'm doing this, um, I'm, you know, I'm thinking aloud to tell you what I'm thinking, um, but it, it's just a, as I find new, like, oh, this actually, as I think about it a little bit more, this is going to be common to more things and all that, I'll move it up the hierarchy. Um, so look at our, so we've changed player, or actually, I don't know if we changed player or not, but I, I would periodic, after making a bunch of changes, I would go back and test things. So that works, awesome. Um, now we're gonna test the piece. And hopefully, this will work. And it does. They might be saying, like, why am I creating two of them? Well, let me show you why I'm creating two of them. Um, let's go into the, uh, the player. And here's another mistake students will make. They won't make things final, that's fine. I can forgive that if we run the tests. Um, so I can run all the tests at once. Um, if we're in the tests, they all pass. Final or not, it doesn't matter. But here's what students sometimes do. They make things static. Static means it's shared. That means that we just did the name, right? So that means in the test, when we set the name to X for the first player, awesome. When we set the second player's name to O, it changes the shared value, which means player one and player two both wind up with the name of O. So let's run this and you'll see that it fails. It'll fail on this line here. And it did fail on this line here because we expected X, but we got O because we made that static. So that really drives home, hopefully, the difference between static and non-static. So we don't do that, <laughs> okay? Um, and we're gonna run, make our change, so we're gonna run our tests again. Just make sure things are still happy. They are happy. So we've got a, um, our tic-tac-toe. Um, we've got a, uh, a player, and um, it can be set to X and O. We've got a piece, and the piece can belong to the appropriate one. Um, so that's good. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do now, uh, like I said, I, I didn't have any intention of actually creating an entire tic-tac-toe game. Maybe, I'll, maybe I will do that later, not today. Um, I'm just giving you the, the gist of things at the moment. Um, so I'm going to do one more big thing, which is I'm going to make sure that the tic-tac-toe player has an X or an O only. Um, and there's various ways I can go about doing this. Um, I could use an enum and all that, but I'm just going to go with the string. Um, but it means that I'm going to have to deal with exceptions. So I'm going to go to the player, and I'm going to do a new method. So I'm going to call create a test for the bad constructor cases. So what I need to do is I need to think what can go wrong creating a tic-tac-toe player. Well, um, maybe it takes a, a name. So maybe I pass in null for the name. And in our case, um, for the uh, tic-tac-toe player in particular, it has to be X or Y. Right? In the case of a uh, chess player, it would have to be black or white, say. Um, maybe we'd pass in the color and we deal with it that way, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we have to we have to pass in a string that's not null, and it has to be either X or Y. Um, and actually, it's pretty true of every player that we don't want the name to be null, right? So first thing I do is check if the name is null. Oh, sorry, actually. I'm doing this backwards <laughs> and do all that. Um, I'm going to go to the tic-tac-toe player test and I'm going to test the things. So, um, and I'm going to go, I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, let's 
Let's see if it's got that handy. No, of course not. Um, let's go back to this one so I can just steal some code. It's okay, it's my code. I'm allowed to steal it. So this is the uh, thing. So the tic-tac-toe player. Um, it's gonna. I want it to throw an illegal argument exception when we make a new tic-tac-toe player passing in null for the string. So what I'm what this says is that if I create a tic tac toe player that has no that has null, I expect it to throw an illegal argument exception, and I expect to get the message back from that exception that says nm cannot be null. So let's go do that. If the name oh um, before I do that, um, it's always good just to write our tests, or run, run our test, um, and make sure that it's going to do that. It does indeed fail. If it doesn't fail, uh, that could be good, could be bad. Uh, in this case, it does fail exactly like I'd want. It we expected a legal argument exception, but nothing was thrown, so that's fine. That's what we expected because we didn't throw anything. So we can go into the player and say if nm equals null, throw. legal argument exception and we're not going to bother with that message right now and we're going to run the test and it should be fine on the throws and complain about the next line and that's what it complained about and it expected nm cannot be null I'm just going to copy but it got null back and that's because we didn't set the string in here so see if I just put A in here and go back into the player test and run it, it's going to, instead of saying it was null, it's going to say but was that it was A, right? So it tells me what I'm doing wrong. Um, so go back to my player, put that in there, run back to the player test and run it. Awesome. So again, um, what I said before, for um, in, in class was that the tests are only as good as what you write. So the problem is that we don't want to have anything other than X and O being passed in. And we're not testing to see what happens if you pass in something other than X or O. So I'm gonna pass in bad constructor, we'll call it null. Um, and I'm gonna write another one that passes in something that's incorrect. So passing a bad name. Um, so this one we can say, um, we'll talk about exceptions later on. So I'm going to leave this as an illegal argument exception. Later on, we can make a, a more fulsome discussion about this. So I actually might come back to the tic-tac-toe game later on. So we can show a, a few things because there are a few things that uh, um, this could be used to build on. Um, so what we want to say is that and um, must be x or o and actually strictly speaking i want to do double quotes was um i guess we'll put in lowercase x and that's if we created one with a lowercase x now um Hopefully you can see that this is going to get tiresome because I'm going to have to do this over and over and over again with different things. So I'm actually going to make a helper method. This is quite common. So I'm going to make a private function. I'm 
going to hard code x this time. We're just going to pass in an m, right? The parameter, and it's not going to be that. It's going to be in quotes. Percent s. Now you're probably wondering what the percent s thing is, and you have seen me do this in some other things, I think, but. Uh, we do string dot format, and now that percent s thing, we pass in name, and percent s becomes name, right? So um, the string format is quite nice. It means you don't have to do all the pluses on the strings, which can become a little unreadable. Um, this is something called string interpolation. Um, lots of languages have it. Okay, so we're going to call bad constructor uh, name with x. Um, we're going to pass in o. We're going to pass in xo. We're going to pass in ox. We're going to pass in um, spacex x space Oop. space o o space and then we'll do spaces around the x and the o right so these are all the bad kind of things i can think of right lowercase x lowercase o um, an x and an o, an o and an x, and just for fun, hello world, just to be sure, <laughs> right, with no spaces. Right, so this is a number of bad things. Um, so let's give it a shot. It will fail the test, because <laughs> we haven't written any tests for this yet. So it's complaining here that um, we're supposed to be... Uh, um, failing and we're not. So you can click on this and it'll actually show you the uh, the line as well. Right. So now we have to go write the code to pass the test. So the trick is we write the test first and then we write the code to pass the test. Um, we can't put the code in up here, right? If and m equals uh, space, some of that. Uh, we'll show, first of all, we shouldn't use equals, we should use dot equals. Right? Doesn't allow us because super has to be the first line of the code, right? So that's fine. We'll put it down here. Um, and remember, that's going to call the parent uh, constructor, which is the one that's going to tell us if we've passed in null or not. So we don't have to check for null inside of ourselves. Um, so if the name equals x or the name equals o is good. So if it's not x or o, I think that logic is correct, um, we're going to throw a new legal argument exception and we'll just leave that blank for now and just see if it throws the exception. So we know it's this one that has trouble, so we'll run that. And yeah, so we're getting the name must be extra, but it was that. So just need to take our code here, use the same kind of thing. String of format. I'm sure we'll learn to spell. And then must be x or o was percent s, comma, and m. And now we'll go back to the player test and run it. And hopefully this works. 
awesome. Um, there's one other test I'd like to do, which we didn't do, which is um, what happens if we pass in an empty string? Now you could say, well, wait, we've already handled that, right? It's got to be X or O, but I actually want to make it more generic than this. I want to say that any player can't have a blank name. All right. Um, so we're going to go back to player. Now things get a little trickier. So here we've got the empty one. Um, so we'll go back to our test of the player and we'll run the empty one and see. That worked out well. There's more than that for an empty string. So let me do the same kind of thing we did before. Make a helper. So we're passing in an empty string there, but there's a bunch of other things. What happens if it's just space? What happens if it's just a tab? What happens if it's just a new line? Right? What happens if it's a whole bunch of spaces, a whole bunch of spaces, and uh, some tabs? Right? So those are all things that are also white space because you can't see anything with them. So let's run the test and it will fail on the second one. So if I come down here and I click on this, nope, not that, not that, uh, this one, yeah, nope, not that one, <laughs> this one, right? It failed on this one because all we're doing in the player is checking to see is it literally the string equals. To fix that, we can do this. So strip. Um, right, it doesn't trust the, uh, the thing, but it will. Oh, there we go. Returns a string whose value is a string with all the leading and trailing white space removed. Yay. Um, now, again, I don't really like to do that. My rules are pretty simple. Um, I always declare all my variables up top. You don't have to do that. That's just my personal preference. I do that in C. You used to have to do that in C. Um, you don't have to uh, for a long time now, but that's where it was. Um, I like to put all my block variables at the top of the block so I can easily find them. Um, if I put them anywhere in the code, it makes my life a little bit harder. Um, I also never give it a value. Um, I like consistency, so putting them all at the top of the block, consistent. Um, if I can't assign all of them a value where I declare them, then I shouldn't assign any of them a value where I declare them. Um, here's another thing about final. Um, this is what's called a blank final. So we don't have a value given to it. We're giving it the value here. But what happens if I try and do this again? It'll be a compile time error because it says you've already assigned it a value. So this is what final does. It says it can receive a value once and only once for the scope it's in. And we've given a value here. We can't give it another value. Um, so I don't like to pass function calls, method calls as parameters to other things. I don't like to do them as part of an if statement or something else. I always make temporary variables. Um, it makes debugging much easier because when I'm debugging, I can just put my mouse over the thing here and it'll show me the value. Um, you can save yourself a lot of time doing that. It's stylistic. It's your choice. It's not a requirement. 
Um, so let's go back to the player test and see. Run this again. And I got it wrong. What did I get wrong? <laughs> Oh, okay, I think I know what I got wrong, which is my logic, um, which is where the uh, purpose of the unit test comes in. So if, I think I'm fine to my hand. So I could do it with an and like this. And again, this is stylistic. Um, the parentheses are not needed, but I like the not to stand out. Um, otherwise it might get hidden. So in personal taste, it's you know, your choice. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. What did I do wrong? So the name can't be X or O, but was that? Um, which shouldn't have happened. So, hmm, this is good. I'm legitimately stuck. Um, I don't know, I'm just not thinking. Um, so it's a good chance to see the debugger. So we should set the debugger, and what we can say now is that we want to debug. Oh, not that one. We want to debug this test. Wait a second. I put it in the wrong place. Um, so let's stop this for a second. Um, whoop, cancel. Um, what I want to do that is in the piece, and I actually think I know what I did wrong. Um, but that's fine, I'll still go through the debugger. So, sorry, in the player. Um, no, I don't know what I did wrong. Okay. I do know what I did wrong, um, but I'm going to put it in here so we can see what uh, what's wrong. Um, so, I set my breakpoint. Um, so it's at the breakpoint, you just go into the um, line you want, and you can click on it, or you can right mouse click. Uh, should be able to right mouse click somewhere and say it is at a breakpoint or not, um, or maybe there's a breakpoint menu. Um, I always just click in here. Toggle breakpoint. Um, that should do it. But anyways, I just click on this, it's easiest. Um, so let's go ahead and run this in the um debugger now the debugger is neat um you can see all the values of your variables right so this is a tic-tac-toe player the name right now is null because we haven't set the name yet um, the nm is equal to an empty string and you can see name is null and we can click over here and see how did we actually get here right so we were on this line here and then we went into this line here, which is the one creating it. Uh, then we went to, um, again, it's something weird. And here's this with a, uh, the closure. Um, again, still on the closure. And then we actually wind up in here. Now note, note that we're in something called an init. That's actually what the constructor name gets called, right? Angle bracket init. Um, which is, you can't start a, a, a method name with angle brackets, but uh, it's, not, it's not the constructor, it's actually called the, literally the word init with angle brackets around it. Um, so we've stripped it. Um, so we're going to, since I know this one passes, I'm actually gonna say, um, um, oh, is there not a, eh, all right, 
just because of the uh, thing I'm on. It's not showing me on my Mac the uh, little taskbar thing. Um, and that's usually where the things show up that let you continue on with what I want to do. <laughs> so I don't know where the menu is. Um, usually on my taskbar, there's a, uh, a way to make it do a, a step to the next thing. And they're not showing up here either. Um, so the ID has changed a little bit on me. Uh, So it's continuing the debugger to actually actually tell us how to do it. All right, I will not worry about this right now. I'm going to stop it. I'll do a thing on debugging another time. Um, so the problem is that we're checking to see if the name equals stripped. That's not what we want to do. We want to see if the stripped can spell dot length equals zero. Right, because if we strip the strip all the white space away and we're left with a length of zero, we're good. Uh, so let's see if that works. There we go. So that worked, and now that I think I'm done, I can come into the tests and say run all, and they all pass. So that's what I want to see. If we made a mistake, then that would. Uh, show up as a fail. Um, so now I have my tests. I can be uh, guaranteed to a degree that things work, um, which is the entire point. So we've seen how to create tests. You just put out test. Um, we've seen how to deal with exceptions. That's just assert throws. Um, and, and then we've checked to see that something is what we expect, which is the assert that and the equal to. Um, the assert that and equal to come from Hamcrafts. Um, if you didn't have that, it's a different style, but uh, I, I find the Hamcrest more readable than the default one from JUnit. Um, those are the basic things you need to know about unit testing. Um, like I said, I'll do another thing on debugging another time, um, but I think that is all that's important for right now. Um, your assignment, when I give it to you, your first assignment, you'll get next week. Um, it will, um, I'll provide you some JUnit tests and you need to pass them. Um, so uh, you should refer back to this to see how to go by doing that. Everything that we've done here is what you got to do to pass those. It obviously won't be a tic-tac-toe game and all that, um, but the concepts are there. All right, I will post this shortly.